Hi, welcome to Kim's Haven. My name is Rhoda and today we are on day 28. Hallelujah. God has been very kind and faithful to carry us through. You know, when you commit to something, sometimes you face a lot of challenges along the way and obstacles. And this one, uh, doing the Proverbs 31 day challenge has not missed those hurdles and um, uh, obstacles along the way, but God has been kind and gracious and faithful to help me to keep pushing even through the obstacles of life. I, I always tell you that trouble will, will come. Trouble always comes, but my prayer is that you will not let trouble stop you from what you know God has called you to pursue. So I knew in my heart and understood it very well that the Lord wanted me to carry through the 31 day challenge through the book of Proverbs. And I have really um, gone through it with a lot of grace. God has been very gracious, has given me a lot of grace to be able to carry it through. And as I've been sharing the insights from the book of Proverbs, I have also been learning. So it's not that you're the only one who's been learning. I have been learning as well. Again and again, I get something new and something refreshing to my soul. So today we are diving into Proverbs 28. We have a few more days and we will be done with this book. Please, if you have not watched the others, kindly go back. You can start from day one. You can actually start from anywhere because every day we just dive in one chapter a day. And we did this for the sole purpose of gaining wisdom, practical wisdom for living. So today, please take your Bible, um, take a cup of water or tea, depending on the weather or what you love. And let's read Proverbs 28. So Proverbs 28 verse number one says that the wicked, they flee though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. That when you are live in wickedness and do wicked things, you are always afraid of who is chasing you, of what is in your surrounding, of what is following you. But if you live in righteousness, you are bold. So there's something about righteousness and boldness. It's like they go hand in hand. You have a confidence to know that whatever you're doing is right. So it helps you to walk with a lot of boldness in whatever you do. And that's the beauty of uh, obeying God's word, of walking in his instruction and in his way, because it's by so doing that you are walking in righteousness through Christ Jesus. And as you do that, your heart, your mind, your body, your soul gains boldness. Verse number 20, verse number two, sorry, of Proverbs 28 says that when a country is rebellious, it has many rulers, but a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. Discernment and knowledge is very important. Before even we look at leadership from a country level or that high-end kind of leadership, we know you know we've been called to lead self. You, you need to be able to have the skill to lead yourself before you lead other people. So we might say that, oh, I am not a leader, but if you do not lead yourself, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you lead people or a big gathering of people or big company and anything like that. But each and every one of us has been called to a place of self-leadership. If you cannot lead yourself, you cannot pursue your plans and purpose and what God has in store for you. So every day as you wake up, you've been called to lead first self and then lead others that are um, you have authority or influence over it can be family it can be your children it can be you know your workplace it can be a church family wherever god has placed you but you cannot do that successfully if you don't know how to lead self so in leading self if we start from there it says that you need discernment and knowledge so you need discernment to know when something is right when something is wrong when something is about to happen so we need that spirit of discernment to lead ourselves and we also need knowledge. And how 
can we get these things? We get them through prayer. We get them through seeking the word of God. We get them through wisdom, through spending time in the presence of God because he's the giver of knowledge and he's also the one who gives us a spirit of discernment. And when we have those things, we walk in boldness as we have learned in verse 1 and lead us, self, and then lead other people. Verse number three says that a ruler who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crops. I grew up in a farm and every time when we had planted, especially corn, we used to do big tracks of corn. And when we have planted corn, my mom's um, wish and prayer is that there will not be so much rain when the corn are in a certain height. Because if the, the rains come and they are very windy, they blow away the corn and it lies flat on the ground and it affects the harvest because then the, the corn is meant to grow upright and produce corn. But if it grows corn, 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 yeah, produce kennels uh, on the cobs, it has to be upright. But if the wind blows and then it lies down flat, it means that the harvest from that produce will be low and then will suffer loss because it's a big land. And so the Bible is equating um here verse number four that if you um no no verse number three that a ruler who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that's what i understood about the driving rains because it leaves no crops like it, it destroys the crops when that rain come so if you are a ruler who oppresses the poor person who does not consider the poor and take action a person who's not kind-hearted to the poor is like you leave destruction something that must have will have brought you profit leaves you a loss and it's just by your doings because you have oppressed the poor let us be people who consider the poor and show kindness and mercy and generosity towards the poor then we will have profit in our crops we will have profit in the work that we do and in everything that we put our hands to do we shall prosper Verse number five says that evil doers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understand it fully. If you seek the Lord, he will show you what is right. But if you want to pursue things by your own strength and your own might and your own knowledge, then you do not and you can't understand anything. And that's how you'll find that things are going wrong all the time. Things can go wrong sometimes, maybe because we fail to learn from something or we need to learn from something but if you're a person who seeks the lord in everything that you do then he brings understanding to you sometimes you might do something and you realize you're very wrong in what you are doing but if you are a person who's drawn to seeking god in every matter he will show you he will tell you the way you spoke there was wrong you should have spoken this way or the way you behaved there you exhibited or anger or negligence and this is the way you should have behaved so it's been it's very wonderful to walk under the leadership of, of the holy spirit and the lord leading your steps submit yourself to the will of god verse number six says that better the poor whose walk is blameless than the rich whose ways are perverse Verse 7, a discerning son heeds instruction, but a companion of gluttons disgraces his father. You see, this verse 28, 7 is really relating to verse of Proverbs, what we read yesterday from Proverbs 27, verse 17, that iron sharpens iron, that it does really matter the people you work with, the people you, you associate with, because if they are wise and they are of good example and they lead in integrity, you know, you, you gain just maybe by being around them or observing what they do or by what they speak into your life. But if you work with people who are uh, not wise and verse 7, it says that it gluttons as well, it's like you're bringing disgrace just by the company that you keep. So let us be careful on the company that we keep. Also, you need to consider uh, the way where you're going that's what I want to say you need to consider the direction you're going and look at those people around you and ask yourself are we headed to the same direction are they contributing to the place where I'm going 
or they are already that season is ended so consider wisely every time be a person who evaluates your relationship your companion evaluates your environment the places you live the places you visit be a person who does who evaluates and reflects and also um joins like the present to where you are going or where you've come from and where you are going and make the changes as the holy spirit leads you verse 8 says that whoever increases wealth by taking interest of all profit from the poor amasses it for another who will be kind to the poor hmm. what a learning there that if you are oppressing the poor to get wealth which you've already seen before that you do not oppress the poor to get with wealth because that wealth will gain wings and it will fly away and to in verse 8 of 28 we are being told that if we amass wealth from the poor and gain profit, we are amassing that wealth for the person who will actually show kindness and generosity to the poor. So what does that tell us? That if we need to grow in wealth and to increase is to show kindness and generosity to the poor. And this thing I am also learning a lot. In verse number nine says that if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. What we've been doing through this uh, challenge and through reading the word of God, we've been turning our ears to what God is saying. And my prayer is that when we finish this challenge, even as the far we have gotten, if you have learned something, I beseech you to be able to put that thing into practice. Where you have heard the Lord speak to you, if it was about laziness, hard work, diligence, wisdom, anger, if there is an area that you have heard the Lord speak to you through this challenge, put it into practical wisdom so that you do not become detestable because you've already heard, you've heard what God has said, you go and do it. Verse 10, whoever leads the upright along an evil path will fall into their own trap, but the blameless will receive a good inheritance. I am in for a good inheritance. Verse 11, the rich are wise in their own eyes. One who is poor and discerning sees how deluded they are. Discernment will show you many things that you think were right but actually are wrong. And things that you might feel that you have not achieved or you don't know where they are going and he will show you what to do. Discernment will show you what to do. Verse 12, that when the righteous triumph, there is great elation. But when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. Verse 13, that whoever conceals their sins do not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. There is something about concealing sin, and you find that sin is very deceptive. One, it entices you to sin, so you are enticed to sin. And when you sin, there is that false, no, false wisdom, false knowledge that tells you you need to hide this matter so that it's not known, so that it is concealed. But here, the uh, verse 13 is telling that if you conceal sin, you do not prosper. That sin will keep you bound sin will keep you at the bottom if you need to prosper you need to confess your sins and and by confession Bible says that if we confess our sins our god is very fair and just to forgive us so be a person who is willing to confess sin verse 5 uh, 5 uh, 14 says that blessed is the one who always trembles before god but whoever hardens their hearts falls into trouble. And whoever we are in the presence of God, let our hearts be pliable, let them be soft to hear what God has to tell us. Verse 15, like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over her helpless people. A wicked ruler always puts people in great trouble. Maybe with people who rule with wisdom and understanding. Verse 16. He says, a tyrannical ruler practices extortion, but one who hates ill-gotten gain will enjoy a long reign. You see what we read from verse 8 is repeating again in verse 16. That wherever you work to gain wealth, let it be gained justly. Verse number 17, anyone tormented by the guilt of murder will seek refuge in the grave. Let no one hold them back. How sad. That 
may we seek forgiveness for what we have done otherwise the guilt and the torment will keep following us but if you lay your sins bare before the lord he's just he's fair he forgives and then he gives you freedom and do not abuse the freedom that is in christ jesus verse 18 says that the one whose walk is blameless is kept safe but the one whose ways are perverse will fall into the pit those who work their land will have abundant food but those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty i have addressed this verse before verse 20 says that a faithful person will be richly blessed but one eager to get rich will not go and punish what does that tell us in our pursuit for wealth that we should be faithful in all that we are doing we should be faithful in the work of our hands we should be faithful with our time with our resources we should be faithful with what god has placed in our hands and in our um area of work in in our families in what we are managing you know we should be faithful and we will be richly blessed hallelujah verse 21 says that to show partiality is not good yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread that you can do wrong for for hunger hunger is such i don't know what to say but hunger is is something that can lead you in a place of um even destruction you can steal because of hunger you can take bribe because of hunger you can uh, spend overboard like you can go overboard to spend your resources and money because you're just hungry and you think it will feed your soul or your body verse 22 says that the stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them let me tell you something the way to grow wealth in this kingdom in the kingdom of god is to be generous is to open up your hand because god himself open up opens up his hand to give us he's given us many things but above all he's given us christ his only begotten son but he's also willing to always open day by day and give us so for us to receive we need to give for it is in giving we get increase so if you're a person who's always holding you cannot receive and if you cannot receive you cannot increase so the the antidote for stinginess is actually just generosity it's the opposite just give and i know this might be challenging for someone who's not used to giving so my advice will be start where you are if all you can give is at that particular time is ten dollars give those ones start from there and the, the grace of god will grow in in you as you grow to giving and as you give you will realize it will always come back to you it might not come back to you from the same people but it will come to you in from other people or in different ways god is never a debtor to anyone verse number 23 says that whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than one who has a flattering tongue the land to tell people uh, and to rebuke people though in a kind way but learn to tell them the truth um, if you think they need to rectify a matter or they need to change in a character or something just learn to say it in a way that rebukes them for the, for their growth no not just to hurt them or aimless word or words that have no intention to impact the other person but actually to grow the other person is better than uh than a flattering tongue verse 24 says that whoever robs their father or mother and says it's not wrong is a partner to one who destroys who destroys the enemy came to kill still and <laughs> it comes to destroy so do not partner with the enemy to destroy your own life and even your families do not rob do not lie do not teach do not take what does not belong to you verse 25 says the greedy stir up conflict but those who trust in the lord will prosper trust has come up again we lay our trust in the Lord if we need to prosper. Prosperity can come in our, in many ways. It comes physically, it can come in our health, it can come in finances and resources, it 
can come in our families, in their growth, you know, in our businesses, in the career that we are in. So prosperity presents itself in many ways. So we need to learn to trust God in all that we do and commit to him what what who we are what we are what we are doing if we commit to him and trust him to lead us in his way then we shall prosper verse 26 says that those who trust in themselves they are fools but those who walk in wisdom they are kept safe trust in god and commit your plans to him. Verse 27 says that those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them, they receive many curses. That my challenge to you actually will be from today, uh, from this reading, I will challenge you to identify anyone you feel is um, less privileged than you are and actually be a blessing to them. You can be a blessing in many ways. And sometimes you, you hear people say that you give to the poor. People maybe think only of money or material resources. But you know you can give in many ways. You can give of your skill. You can give of your knowledge. You can give of your wisdom. You can give of your time. You can give of your finances. You know, can give in many ways. There's so many things to us that God has placed inside of us for the benefit of others. And if you see somebody poor in that particular area, you can give it to them. You can mentor others like you because you have gained this wisdom and this has worked for you and you see they are lacking in that area. You can, you know, help them up as much as we are helping like poor physically in, in resources and environment we can also help in many other ways that the lord has graced you and you you see the bible is telling us that by giving to the poor we will lack nothing who doesn't want to be in a place of abundance where you don't lack anything i really want to be there where i don't lack anything and i think this is the other way we've been told first we've been told that the lord if is our shepherd we lack nothing and then also if we give to the poor we lack nothing. How beautiful it is that we already have two ways that we can ensure that we lack nothing. One is by submitting ourselves to the leadership of Jesus Christ, who is our shepherd. And then we also have this other way that by giving to the poor, we will lack nothing. Verse 28 finally concludes the, this uh, chapter 28 saying that when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. But when the wicked perish, the righteous thrive. There's a, there's a link of wickedness and destruction and righteousness and prosperity. So choose today which side you want to take. You cannot mix the two. You see, they are not mixed. It always stands out. Either they are fools and wise or wickedness and righteousness. You cannot have a little of this and a little of that. So I hope that today you make a wise decision to walk in wisdom and in righteousness. Let us pray. Father, we come to you again this beautiful day that you have set before us, that you've spoken to our hearts and you've let us open our hearts to you as well so that we may receive from you. We honor you so greatly for being with us and guiding us and leading us. See how far we have come, day 28, and how much you have spoken and poured unto us. And what I pick from today's uh, teachings is that you want us to walk in righteousness and in generosity as well, that we give to the poor, that we will lack no good thing, and that we walk in righteousness. For by walking in righteousness, we will prosper and we will thrive, my Father. And the many other things that we picked along the way that as we read your word, Father, let our lives be changed. Let us prosper and thrive in all that we do because you've gained your wisdom, your knowledge, my Father. As the remainder of the days, we submit them to you. We commit them to you, Jehovah, and pray that the Holy Spirit will always lead us, instruct us, and open our hearts to receive you. Thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness through this challenge. We honor you so greatly and we bless your name. For this we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. May the Lord bless you. Kindly consider subscribing and let us grow this channel together. Leave me a comment if you learned something. Share with your family and your friends. Let them become wise too so that we can continue sharpening each other. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow for day 29. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.